Murray Mex said the All Black Legend joins us. Mex, where are we at? We played 12 tests. We've had eight wins. We've had four losses. We've won the last six on trot. Is this, in your mind, the litmus test for this All Black side this season, this game? Yeah, it, it probably is. Good. Uh, hello, Martin. How Good day. How are you, mate? Um, the problem is it's been we've been so inconsistent. Um, you know, when you have a look at the the games, I thought we'd turn the corner, like I said last week. But then we played against Japan and we played poorly. We played against Wales and we we did well. We played against Scotland. We played it was the worst performance I think I've seen from an All Black team. Um, and now we've got England. So you know, poor, good poor, maybe we'll play well tomorrow. Um, so, you know, there's been inconsistency, Martin, and that does worry me. So I'm not sure if it's a litmus, litmus test for the team themselves or for the program going forward. And I think when you get inconsistency within a squad, it's a concern. I'm going to play you a little quote here, um, and this is from Jason Ryan um, uh, playing uh, Scott Barrett at six. It's about 30 seconds long. Have a little listen to this. I think it's a mixture of everything. He's got unbelievable uh, line-out skill set with Harry Jumps, and not only is, is what he is around our mauling, both attack and, and defence, but he's also got really good line-out knowledge. So he's really good on formation and line-out defence. So we believe that was really instrumental in, in against an England side who have got some good variation in their line-out platforms. Um, and uh, along with that, I guess it was important that, you know, we really want to start Guzzler for his 100th test um, alongside Sam. So we needed um, the best we've got in the most experienced pack that we could pick, and we believe we've done that. OK, Mick, so he's talking obviously about uh, Brody coming back for his 100th test, but you have been on... Barrett at sixes side, if I, that makes English English sense. You've you've been you've you've been a big in favour of this, haven't you, Scott Barrett at six? Absolutely, and I agree entirely with those words. Just listening to that uh, little interview, uh, everything he said was bang on the knocker, which gives me gives me good encouragement that they know what they're doing. You know, because we all have our opinions, don't we? Yes, we do, Martin. You know, yep. you you have yours, and your listeners will have theirs, and of course, it's, the opinions are judged on their own experience and their own feeling. And I, I don't know, um, you know, how much, uh, how much he knows about loose forward play, but listening to him uh, in that interview, you know, he said all the right things because one of the most important things of, to get, of the game today is possession. It's always been important, but aerial possession these days is more significant than it ever was. Um, and there's so many more opportunities to win the ball uh, in the air. And you've got to have a minimum of three really good guys in the air. And um, with Whitelock and Guzzler, what a great name that Guzzler Yes, it's a brilliant like name. <laughs> it's an old school name, Mix, isn't it? Yeah, Guzzler and also Barrett, Scott Barrett. It's, um, it's, those are three very, very good guys in the air. Tremendous, probably world-class, the whole three of them. Um, and, you know, I like to think we could have another one in the loose forwards too, to tell you the truth. You know, to have four would be a real bonus. And maybe Papa Lee will come on, come along in that rega- in those regards, and that would be good. Um, so yeah, I'm I'm really pleased with the um, with the selection of Scott Barrett at blindside. If he hadn't have been picked at blindside, um, I would have given up hope. I think I would have been really really worried. This has got to be the one of the um, biggest or biggest and most dynamic forward packs the All Blacks have ever named. If you look at the size and the weight of the eight forwards, I don't think, I haven't got proof of this, but I don't think there's another forward pack in my living memory that would be as big and strong and dynamic as this. Well, I'd, so actually, I'd, argue, I'd argue with the 2015, mate. When you go through the front row, you've got the same two locks and the loose forwards then with Jerome, Kieran and Richie. I mean, you're talking about, you know, I mean, okay, yeah, there might be some kilos difference, but you're talking about dynamic. You use the word dynamic there. Yeah. 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 So you reckon, uh, so who well, do you I think that Kieran Reed. Well, I think Kieran Reed at his absolute best was so athletic and provided such a point of difference at number eight. Because remember, he took kickoffs as well. He you know, Before he got his injuries, he could really run. You had Richie McCaw, who was just outstanding across the ground. Jerome was so physical. You got the same two locks. And incidentally, Mick, here's a stat you'll love. Um, so Sam and Brody now take over from Bucky's Borta and Victor Matfield as the two most capped locking combination in the world. So you love your combinations. How about that? 
Oh, I think that's magnificent because Bucky's brought him. Um, there's no doubt about it. Those two uh, for South Africa were outstanding, weren't they? For so long, just magnificent. I mean, they're good in the line out, and you know, there was. And and I think that I think it's a credit to um, to to Gazlov and Whitelock. You know, I think it's fantastic, and and good on them. And let's hope they they have their best best game together. Um, yeah, no, I will stand by that. I'll challenge that 2015 because, you know, I haven't been happy about our loose forward selection no, no. because it didn't seem to be going anywhere. Um, and I'm a bit happier now because uh, even if they've been forced into it, they've got Scott Barrett on the blind side. Now, for us to be competitive and dynamic, he's he's an integral part of that blind side. So once you get a big guy who's two metres tall and athletic, and has a work rate from hell, um, you'd have to say Papa Lee and Sevilla, um, you know, are a real bonus. They will have um, room to move. They won't have to do as much of the donkey work because Scott Barrett will do that, and he is dynamic as well. Can I, okay, I'm going to so, so, put a spanner in your wheel here, Max. We played Scott Barrett at six against England in 2019, and the pack got smacked. We we didn't start with Sam Kane. We had Artie at seven. We had Karen, who was probably still battling injuries, at eight. So now we've got we we got Scott Barrett at six. We've got Artie at eight, Papali'i at seven. Is that a vastly improved loose forward trio than what we played in 2019 against them in that case? Well, if what you say is correct, you just said to me that uh, Kieran was battling injuries, probably... Well, I think he was. He looked as though he was, wasn't he? Yeah. He didn't look as though he was the player that he was. I mean, you you could tell that as well. You're, you're the best number eight I know to talk to about this. I mean, when he was on, he was absolutely outstanding. He was the world's best player. But by the 2019 semi final, you could tell it had taken its toll on him. Yeah, no, but I mean, I think that this loop forward trio um, is, is the best we could field at the moment. But I spoke about the whole forward pack being dynamic, and I'm talking about the front row as well. See, the game has moved on from 2015, and the requirement now is uh, for guys like, um, you know, De Groot to be mobile, and they are mobile. Um, Lomax, I think, is making progress every single game I see him as far as being dynamic. We know he's a huge man. Mm. I mean, I think he's six foot four. Now, that's as that's tall as some of our lock. Yeah. 2015, mm. you know, and and the group's a big boy as well, and K- Cody Taylor's always been big. You also, know? and also you got to remember Coles and in, in 2015 was bloody dynamic as well. I, 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 I mean, I, we're arguing semantics here, but I think that that four yeah, pack. We're arguing semantics exactly, but but you know, you, if you add up two uh, weights weights of those two four pack, I bet I bet this one that's playing uh, on Saturday at Twickenham will be heavier. The other and thing I'm is. Saying, Sorry, the other thing is that um, that Eddie Jones has also picked a really big bruising forward pack himself, so he would have anticipated that that's what we would do, that it's going to be physical up front. So this, I mean, this is what will excite you about this conte- contest, I'm sure, won't it? You wait till those big ball runners start. Yeah, well, I, I'm, I've sort of made a, a mental note here that there's three big factors in this performance uh, in the weekend, this yep. match. In the, and the first one, as we've been discussing here, of course, is the All black side. Um, and I think that the selectors have got it about right with, with the players that are eligible, that are available, not injured. They've got it right um, as far as the board pack is concerned. And so I'm, I'm quite relieved. The second factor is Twickenham itself. Now, Twickenham is not like any ground I can remember. It is a fortress. And if you think about the games we play against the Wallabies in Australia and the games we play against South Africa, this Twickenham is more of a fortress than any other place. I mean, this is an enclosed stadium and it's got an aura about it because of the attitude of the people. Yes, you're the right, mate. The you're stand. so right, mate. Yeah. <laughs> if there's ever a bunch yeah. of punch me faces in a rugby stand, it's them, isn't it? I, I mean, I, I don't mean that in a cruel, I just, but they just get up and they get up you, don't they? They do. And, you know, the last time I was there commentating, I spoke um, um, pre-match to a group of um, um, a luncheon, a big luncheon at the stadium before the game started. Yep. And I don't know how many were there. There were hundreds of people there. And um, at that stage, we had only ever lost twice to England at Twickenham, ever. <laughs> and so I started my little speech by saying, put up your hand if you think England will win today. 
and everyone in the room except for three Kiwi guys in the back corner put up their hand. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. I said, I can't believe you people. But they're you so know, confident, got, mate. They're I, so confident, aren't they? I, well, cocky, cocky, bordering on arrogant was the words I was looking for. But anyway, they do have this sort of attitude that, you know, it's our game. Well, we called it rugby. Yeah. Um, you know, we, we started it. This is the home of rugby in the world. Um, blah, blah, blah. They have this incredible attitude. And that all adds to, you know, the aura of the stadium or the occasion. Um, so, uh, fortunately, we've got some very experienced players in, that all, in the Sawback team too. But, you know, playing at that ground, and I've played there quite a few times, you do feel like you're under a bit of pressure before you even um, take your first metre. Um, and it is a... And that's a, a that's a, a factor for sure. The second factor we've just um, can that do either. Sorry, can that do one or two things to you? I mean, as a player, I know that that you loved that. Can that make you shrink as much as it can? You know, make you grow an extra leg as a player. Can it do both things to you? Absolutely. And those players that come through as great international players, they get better under this sort of environment. And the players that aren't quite uh, at that same level um, disappear a bit. Um, and that is a reality, and it's all to do with, I don't know, psyche, I suppose, um, mental strength, these sorts of things. Um, who knows? That's that magic component mm. that separates sort of the provincial player from the, you know, the test match player. Um, so, and the third thing, um, the third thing was Eddie Jones, which you brought up there. Those are my three factors. So Eddie Jones is Eddie Jones and the English team, not just Eddie by himself. <laughs> so Eddie has probably had more experience of picking teams uh, and trying to compete against the All Blacks than any other coach alive. And, you know, you don't get... Um, you get more cagey as you get older, as you get more experienced. I'm absolutely sure. Coaches get more and more cagey and aware as they get older. They get better. There's very few coaches that get worse. Uh, because they're continually learning. And I think he's pretty shrewd. And when I look at the makeup of that English team, you know, they beat us in the World Cup um, semi final. And I was sitting there in the grandstand Same. very upset about Same. it. Same. And it was terrible. It was yeah. really terrible. But, but, you know, it was the way they beat us. They that was it. They just cut us out of the match in a way. We weren't um, in the game, Mix, you know, were we? You just felt it right from about the five minutes, mate. That they just we just weren't in that game. That's right, and and it was sort of this grunt, this sort of uncompromising grunt they have up front. And if you look at this team, you know they've named two out of the three loose forwards are, are abrasive, driving players. Um, they've named a a very strong forward pack. Yep. Nowhere near as expressive as our forwards, in my mind, but they are, you know, that forward pack collectively will be um, awesome. Yeah, well, you I know how they're coming at us. They're coming straight down the middle, mate. There are no frills in this. They're using um, big, big Billy Vinopolo as a runner. I mean, Cody, that's exactly what they do. They'll, they'll niggle us, they'll get under our skin, and they'll just come bashing, mate. And we've got to actually meet that, don't we? That's right, and they'll they'll win a lot of ball too. Even though we've got you know um, White Lock and and Ritalik, uh, and Barrett, they will still win their share of ball because they've got good ball winners. But you're right, they're niggly. Um, they know how to use the referee. The referee's a Frenchman. Uh, <laughs> See, the look, listen to that, Max. At some stage, you've got, at some stage, you've got, you've got to like a French referee. I know that you think they're strutting peacocks, but there's got to be one that you like in the world. Come on. Oh, yeah, they're all good if you've got a Barbarians game. Oh, okay. But when you're talking about a, a test match and you've got to win it, you've got to win it. There's no coming second in a test match. You've got to win it. Then you don't really want a referee in the Northern Hemisphere. And you certainly, you maybe if you're playing at home, mm. uh, but that referee wasn't so good at home, was he, in that last Lions tour, right. that, that French referee we had. So, you know, you'd have to say um, that Jones has picked a team to beat the All Blacks. Yes. And he's got a grunty forward pack and he's got some very, very good backs. You know, if you look at their attacking ability of Noel, Stewart and May and Tuolangi, you know, it's those back four, they are all attackers. 
They're all good with the ball in hand. They're all capable of scoring tries. They're not your your normal defensive um, English backs with you know no expression. They are bloody good, competent footballers, and inside them they've got two playmakers, Farrell and Smith. One's steady Eddie, and the other guy's sort of up and down. You know, it's um it's a, it's a pretty good balance, I reckon. Uh, so they're going to be a very very hard team to to beat. So your question, which I've taken a long time to answer, is is this a, is the litmus this a test? Yeah. Yeah, is this the litmus test? And it probably is in many respects. Um, you know, coupled with what I said before, um, the inconsistency mm. of the squad. Well, maybe if we, if maybe we, the All Black selectors have, uh, are, you know, are new with this group when you look at the changes there's been in the last couple of months. Um, maybe they're trying out players, um, but they have to settle. Uh, they have to settle for their team. And maybe this is an indication that this is getting pretty close to their team. I know there's a couple of injured players that are back in New Zealand uh, that will possibly come into the side. But, you know, I think we've got a hell of a game ahead of us. All right. um, Before we get on to the back fans, I'll just say one last thing. Okay, so when you just run through the results of this season... From South Africa and Joburg in that last 14 minutes, let's not forget, people, we were down to 14 men. We lost to Argentina in Christchurch, a game we should have won, a game that we weren't outplayed. So it's beat South Africa, lost to the Argies, beat Argy, beat Oz, beat Oz, beat Japan, beat Wales, beat Scotland. If we attach England to that mix and win that game, that's seven on the bounce, that's eight out of the last nine. That's not a bad way to finish. I mean, I, I think we'd all have to, be, have to say that, OK... Maybe the the ship is rewrited, or we're certainly going on the right path. Surely people would have to accept that, wouldn't they? Yes, I agree. I agree. Absolutely agree with that. Um, yeah, if we beat England the weekend, then that's pretty emphatic. There's no doubt about it. And as I said, the inconsistency does worry me. But if inconsistency of performance is coupled with uh, consistency of selection, then Perhaps that solves that problem. All right, let's talk about the Black Ferns to wrap it up then. And I know you're watching that as well. Max, I was there at Eden Park. It was thrilling, mate. It was euphoric. I've never I've never really experienced such a happy rugby crowd. I, I, I probably have, but I, I don't know when. It was, just, it was just a hell of a game to be at, a hell of a game of rugby as well as an occasion. There's no doubt about that. I mean, I wasn't at Eden Park. I was watching it on television, but wasn't it fantastic? Yeah. I mean, it was a great example of the right attitude too and you'd have to compliment the referee i don't i'm not very good at complimenting referee but she did a very good job um but you and i spoke last week about the courage to attack yep because mm. when the black ferns played against uh france they they were closed down the french closed them down they didn't seem to have that courage to attack and you said well this is one of wayne smith's um lines as courage to attack as well and i reckon that came out in the final and if we didn't have that courage and if they didn't feel they had the license to attack um, they wouldn't have carried on right towards it till the end till the last moment I mean what a what an absolutely sensational way to finish that game because you know what do they call it the big white anaconda is yeah. that they call their, their <laughs> rolling ball. yeah mate it was a, yeah god impossible and, to and, stop and you know the very first line out when that happened I thought we're going to battle to hold them and we didn't hold them in that first half something was said at half time uh, and they obviously worked out some sort of plan uh, and and just reading it I don't know what it was because I'm only watching on TV but my view is that they were they started to contest aggressively where the ball was throwing the line out to try and upset it before they got going was the idea uh, stop it at the beginning and um, they actually did that I think with three line outs to go they actually won one mm. and then the second one uh, they stopped at dead in some tracks and the third one was the one that we won on the throw at the end in the, in the 80th minute so it, that was that was wonderful a wonderful achievement and it's a great example of good coaching uh, and good attitude uh, of the players it was just a pleasure to watch and enjoy and I had a mate who been to a few games at Eden Park who's very, very astute and uh, he said that was the most amazing occasion he's ever experienced and this guy's not 
he doesn't get carried away and excited like I do. <laughs> um, and he he made that statement, you know, and it's um it's pretty cool to hear that actually. So yeah. congratulations to you know all all those involved with the Blackburns. What a turnaround in 12 months, and um the, and the whole world is aware of it, and it's probably good for the New Zealand rugby brand uh, as well. Oh, um, no doubt. You know, out there in that international arena. So, um, yeah, it's fantastic. What a fantastic thing. Let's hope the All Blacks can play with the same sort of courage to attack uh, this weekend at Twickenham. And if they do, then it's a great step forward. Mick, thank you so much. So well said. Brilliantly said.